Joining me now is the Republican leader in the Senate, Senator Mitch McConnell. Welcome to This Week. Good morning. Thank you for joining Glad us. Glad to be here. You heard what uh, David Axelrod said about the uh, Republican plan on extending all the mm -hmm. Bush-era tax cuts and mm -hmm. that it would really, you know, put the country more in hoc. Uh, analysts say that it'll cause, you know, add some four trillion or so to the national debt. Are you really going to do that or do you think there will be a compromise mm -hmm. on extending the middle class tax cuts? Well, let's understand what we're talking about here. This has been the tax rate for a decade. We're talking about raising taxes in the middle of a recession. And most economists think that's the worst thing you could do. The president himself was saying that was the worst thing you could do a year and a half ago. So Raising taxes in the middle of a recession is a particularly bad idea, and Republicans don't think that's what we ought to do. So do you not think, I mean, will you quote unquote hold the middle class tax cut hostage to all the tax cuts you want to well, extend? Well, nothing's being held hostage to anything. It was the Democrats themselves who decided not to have this But would debate. you compromise on well, that, I, even after the I elections? was the only one who offered a bill. There was never a bill in the Senate. And you know why? 31 Democrats in the House, five Democrats in the Senate said they agreed with me that we ought not to raise taxes in the middle of a recession. What might happen down the road is not the subject today. The question is, do we want to raise taxes in the middle of a very, very tough economy? All the Republicans think that's a bad idea, and a substantial number of the Democrats think the same thing. Right, but there's also this huge thing that the people of the United States are worried about, and that is the deficit. Absolutely. And, and adding, the, keeping the tax cuts will add trillions to that. And let me ask you this. Um, according to uh, Howard Gleckman at the Tax Policy Center, let's see what he's just written, McConnell would have to abolish all the rest of the government to get a balance by 2020. Everything, no more national parks, no more NIH, no more highway construction, no more homeland security, mm. oh, and no more Congress. Let me tell you so how you, where would you, let me tell you, how the you reduce cuts. the deficit. The two things you need to do. Number one, you need to get spending down. And number two, you need to get the economy going. Right. Everything that's happened in the last year and a half has been to pump up the government. We borrowed stimulus money. We spent it to hire new federal government workers. We sent it down to state so they would not have to lay off state workers. You have to get the economy going. That's the way you narrow the deficit. You get the economy going, you get government spending down, throw a tax increase in there, and we're gonna have this recession go on who knows how long. But you're still not saying where the big, big cuts would come from, because some of the things you're well, talking about- Let me give you an example just, of something I mean, we're doing already. It wouldn't be Social Security or Medicare, Medicaid, wouldn't be the defense. Let me give you an example of something we're doing already. The Senate Republicans offered to freeze the top line on next year's appropriations at essentially what we spent this year. The difference between that and what the president asked for over a 10-year period would be $300 billion. With regard to the entitlements, the president has appointed a deficit reduction commission. I've appointed three members to it. John Boehner's appointed three members to it. They're going to report in December and make a recommendation about what we might do about our long-term uh, long unfunded liabilities. We'll wait and see what they recommend, but hopefully it'll be something that'll be supported on a bipartisan basis. So all of, all of this comes into the Pledge for America, which was uh, announced this week, uh, a platform for mm -hmm. future governing mm -hmm. by, the, by the Republicans. Now, many people say that it's simply more of the same. You've obviously heard a lot of mm -hmm. that over the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. There's basically nothing new. And whether they're left, right, or center, people are complaining that, in fact, it doesn't go far enough, particularly mm -hmm. for the, the very enthusiastic, Tea Party base that you have. So, for instance, Eric Erickson has written about this pledge. It's full of mom-tested, kid-approved pablum that will make certain hearts on the right sing in solidarity, but like a diet full of sugar, it would actually do nothing but keep making Washington fatter before we crash from the sugar high. How are you going to... Were well, you laughing? Well, anytime you do anything in public uh, life, Somebody uh, criticizes it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, that's all right. But I want to ask you, how will you satisfy the, uh, the, the base, which seems to be really an insurrection now, the Tea Party? Would, yeah. you, would you agree that they're yeah. let, let me tell you cascading what, into let, your let space? Let me tell you what everybody agrees on. Everybody agrees on. The primaries are over, and we all agree we want to go out and beat the Democrats November 2nd. Right. So there's all kinds of energy in the Republican Party or people who are inclined to vote Republican. There's... The Tea Party people are not all Republicans, some independents, but one thing we know about everybody who's been active in this movement, we know none of them are going to go out and vote Democrat on November 2nd. We may have some internal differences about various parts, 
but everybody knows who's been in charge well, of the government for the last year and a half. Well, everybody knows who's been in charge of the government for the last year and a half. The Democrats have had the White House. They've had a huge margin in the House, a big margin in the Senate, and they know that if they want to save America, they've got to change the Congress, and that's going to happen on November 7th. Well, as you know, the, uh, the, the recession was declared over. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no recession, and, and many will say that you know they stopped it from going into a Great Depression and that they inherited this, uh, this, this awful situation. But let me ask you this. Yeah. You say you want to go out and win in November. Mm -hmm. I want to play for you something that Tom Ross, the chairman mm -hmm. of the Republican Party in Delaware, said to me on this program mm -hmm. right after Christine O'Donnell, the Tea Party candidate, mm -hmm. won in that last primary in Delaware. Let's, let's just play what he said. We had a candidate that was very close to becoming the next United States Senator from Delaware, and essentially people on our own team clipped him right as he is about to go in the goal line. Right. So that's Mike Castle, who they thought would win that, mm -hmm. that election come mm -hmm. November. And now he's basically saying, perhaps not. So how do you square that? I mean, do you think these Tea Party candidates will be good for you in November? Look, there are 12 places now, right now, where there's a Democratic Senator where our candidate is either a little bit behind, dead even, or well ahead. California, Washington, Nevada, Colorado, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Indiana, North Dakota, Arkansas, Wisconsin, Connecticut, West Virginia. We're competitive in a lot of places. Will we win them all? Who knows? The Delaware primary was interesting. A new candidate, wow. fresh face. I think she's got a good chance of winning. But I mean, she definitely wasn't your candidate. I mean, basically, they one would say that the, the well, you, Republican... You, you picked out is, one Senate no, 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 race. No, no, I just many. gave you 12 yeah, places where we have a chance you, of beating even Democrats. In your, even in your own uh, state. And I want to ask you, actually, yeah. what are the qualifications are the, do these people have? For instance, what is Christine O'Donnell's co qualification mm -hmm. for actually governing? Mm -hmm. What is Sharon Angle's actual qualification mm -hmm. for governing? Well, they, they, they won the primary fair and square against real competition, and they emerged as the nominee. And Sharon Angle is running no worse than dead even against the majority leader of the Senate. I think that's pretty and you're not, significant. Are you not afraid that there, there might be a turnoff? Am, whether am it's I at afraid the of having more Republicans in the Senate? No, that's, that wasn't not. the question. <laughs> the question is, are you not afraid that they, they're somewhat, one would say, some might say, bizarre statements, their sort of fringe uh, quality might actually turn people off. I mean, for instance, what do you say mm -hmm. about a Sharon Angle, who I know you just had a fundraiser for, mm -hmm. who basically talks about enemies in Congress and talks and hints about, you know, armed rebellion to put them down? I mean, is that the kind of talk from you know, a United States <coughs> you senator? You know what most Americans think is extreme? No, I'm asking you that question. Well, I know what I'm going to answer. Might be I, I'm going to answer it. Mm. What most Americans think is extreme is the kind of government we've been running for the last year and a half. We've seen the government taking over banks, insurance companies, car companies, nationalizing the student loan business. We're on a path to double the national debt in five years and triple it in 10. Most Americans think what's been happening around here for the last year and a half is extreme and they want to change it. And they know that the way to change it is to change the Congress because you don't get to make policy unless you get elected. But you didn't tell me what you think about those kinds of comments from people who want to be uh, you know, a senator. I mean, well, it's look, kind I, of bizarre, don't you agree? I don't think the people of Nevada should be attacked for the choice they made in the primary. And the candidate is running dead even with the majority leader of the United States Senate. Obviously, the people of Nevada think that she's a very good candidate, or she wouldn't be running even with someone of such a power and significance. Do you think there'll be more bipartisan compromise when they come in or less? I think the way to get bipartisan compromise is to not have one side have an overwhelming majority. And the American people know that if they're frustrated with this administration, it won't change on November 2nd. The president will still be there for at least two more years. But they can take the first step toward moving this government back toward the political center and maybe even a little bit right of center if there's a very good election. Senator Mitch McConnell? Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.